Life is built on mistakes, or as the late Bob Ross called them, happy little accidents. Cities are built on foundations of mistakes and failures, ideas that never come to fruition, and projects sent to purgatory. But that leaves a lot of what ifs, doesn't it? Like, what if I actually spent more than three months trying to learn guitar? Would I be a rock star right now? Instead of a, you know, news guy on a green screen? Boston's public transit can be, I don't know, frustrating. And yet it might have looked a lot different if certain plans had come through, or if flying cars had actually become a thing. I wanted to dive into what could have been, and luckily found just the guy to help me do it, Stephen Beauchet. He's a former architect who owns Ward Maps in Cambridge. I sell antique maps from the 19th and 20th century, as well as transit memorabilia and gift products themed to the MBTA. Stephen is an expert on Boston's transportation history. He even wrote a book on it called Boston in Transit. Through his research, he came across many transportation ideas that just got left in the dust. To start things off, how would Boston have looked with an elevated railway running through it? In the late 1880s, an engineer named Joe Miggs designed and built a prototype of just that. This is the time when streetcar networks were crowded, streets were crowded, and the city and the state were trying to figure out how to get rapid transit trains either under or above the city. The solution? Baloney, AKA the Miggs Elevated Railway. The Miggs project's fascinating because he designed these sort of uh, baloney shaped trains. It was actually powered by steam uh, and a couple of cars that you would sit in these little fancy seats. They were velvet covered. It was very beautiful, very 19th, late 19th century. And that ran on an elevated track that went in a, a little sort of uh, like a small roller coaster length uh, in East Cambridge. That used to cross uh, what's now the McGrath Highway and it went into Somerville for a, a, a few feet and then went back into North Cambridge. It worked. Unfortunately, the train didn't last long. Uh, it was actually sabotaged. Bum, bum, bum. Get ready for some intrigue. Well, it was assumed to be sabotage. Uh, mysteriously, the uh, repair house where the train was being stored uh, burned down. And by that point, the city and the state had already gone with electric rapid transit trains. So the, the steam powered baloney train, unfortunately, uh, didn't survive. Was there a conspiracy between rapid transit companies? Some cloak and dagger stuff? Well, there's no proof for now. There's just a lot of speculation. You read newspaper articles, it was always called mysterious. The investigators from the state, they said it was mysterious. So it, mysterious usually means we think something nefarious happened, but we can't prove it. It's too bad the baloney got cooked. Now, let's take a look at some trains we're a bit more familiar with. Imagine if the blue line, the shortest transit line in the city, was a bit longer. That was actually an idea the state had in the 1920s. The state commissioned reports to continue to improve and expand our rapid transit system. And one of the proposals was to unite the blue line all the way from East Boston through downtown, run it through the uh, Tremont Street subway, uh, which is essentially where Park Street and Boylston Street Station are, uh, have it come out near Kenmore Square and run all the way to Brighton. So imagine being able to take the, the blue line now from airport all the way to uh, Brighton. So why didn't this happen? Well, like everything in the world, it comes down to moolah, or the absence of moolah. You would have had to unite all these different aspects of lines, uh, and they continued to prioritize extending existing lines. We're still trying to connect the red to the blue at Charles, and that's just one stop. The transit lines could have looked much different today. Just check out this map. It shows proposals of the green line extending not just a Somerville and Medford, which we're building today, but all the way out to uh, Woburn. We've got uh, the orange line proposed to go all the way out to Reading. I mean, you know, imagine the red line extending not just to Alewife, but to Arlington Heights. Imagine the green line being in a loop that goes out to Riverside and comes back through Newton. Of course, some of these proposals are slowly becoming a reality. If you look at this map, it's interesting to know what we did get completed. We did bring the red line down to Braintree. We did get the red line in some form out to Mattapan, and we are just getting the Green Line extension out to Somerville and Medford. But there's a lot on this map which will probably never be realized. 
Back to transportation prototypes. This one didn't make it in Boston, but it gets points for having the best possible name. The state-of-the-art car, also known as the SOAC train, as it's called. I love that name. And it was a two-car train, and it was intended for use in rapid transit systems that needed to replace their aging fleets. And the federal government's idea was to fund a prototype car that then companies were all geared up, ready to build, and then cities uh, could go ahead and purchase these, and it would save time on development costs. Public transit in Boston would have definitely felt a bit different nowadays if this prototype was adopted. The seats would have been soft and face forward, and we would have had to deal with carpeted flooring. Ugh, just imagine the stains. Ugh. The SOAC train came to Boston's Red Line in 1974, some important people rode it, and then it just faded away after a few days. But you can still check out the original prototype if you got the gumption. We ended up developing um, other trains for Boston, uh, but the cool thing is this prototype still exists. It's at the Seashore Trolley Museum in Maine, and it still has a Red Line sign on it, signed for Harvard. Finally, there are tons of interesting prototypes out there. But this one is fun to think about. How about a London-style double-decker bus in Boston? The Department of Public uh, Utilities was like, we think it's going to fall over, you can't use that. So the Boston Elevator Railway cut the top part off and then used it as a one-story bus. Yep, no double-decker buses for us. We get duck boats. Yeah. Some ideas should stay as prototypes. Steven said that one of the most frustrating aspects of Boston's transportation infrastructure is consistency. It's in the hands of the public and public officials, which are about as consistent as a lava lamp. It's very hard to get consistent public funding and public support and political support for public transit from a year to year basis, not to mention a decade to decade basis. So what would this transportation expert want to see change in Boston's transportation in the future? Well, hate to make the pun, but he is charged up about one big idea. I think what would be a game changer would be if we electrify the commuter rail. All aboard! And it's electric. You're going to obviously get new equipment, but that would be a game changer for pollution, for speed. You can actually start the trains faster and stop them faster if they're electric. I just want Boston Transit to be on time. But you can't always get what you want. You get what you need. Or you just get what your city can afford. Either way, you're probably going to be late.